Hey everyone, I'm Tech Steve, and on today's video, I'm going to show you guys the new TU7000 television set for Samsung. Now, what made me curious is that I've never seen this Crystal UHD. Now, what that is, is Samsung's claiming that it's going to be a lot clearer, but the biggest thing is that this processor in it is supposed to upgrade any signal into 4K resolution. And I need to put this to the test. But on today's video, we're gonna really break this down. I'm gonna put it together for you guys. We're gonna plug it in. I'm gonna show you some of the basic menus and show you some of the things the television set can do. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Sorry, I had a flashback of the days I used to be a DJ. But here's the thing. This television set has these new brackets. Instead of using screws, you just slide them in and they clamp right in. Make sure you put them in order. There's an R on both sides for the right and an L on both sides for the left. And don't worry, if you need to take it out, just grab the bottom of the TV set and they pull right out. Here's a look at the energy savings guide and it also comes with the user's manual, a power cord, the remote control with the batteries and a quick setup guide. The television is only a few inches thick, so it's going to fit pretty flush on your wall compared to some other models on the market. And even though it has the thin bezels, a lot of TVs like this will pick up fingerprints very easily. On the bottom of the set, there are some controls right below the Samsung logo, but it's a series of long press and short press, so don't lose your remote control because it will be hard to operate. Another thing I like about this model is they got rid of all the little circle rings that you needed when you want to mount it on the wall, and it also has the security lock. Now let's talk about the inputs right here for a second. This TV is a fingerprint magnet, so let's keep wiping it down as we do this video. You have a fiber optic output, you have one USB, your over the air antenna, a LAN connection when connecting directly to your router, two HDMI's, and one of them is for ARC for sound bars as well as any type of uh, ARC controlled device, and you have your power cord input. On these new models, it also comes with these cable management clamps. Now taking a closer look at the remote control, you have your power, source button, as well as the number pad. You also have your volume, mute, channel list, and channels. Also below that, you have a Netflix and an Amazon Prime button, a home button, and if you plan on using the built-in internet tuner, you can use the Samsung Plus button that's right there built in. You also have a guide, you up and down, return, and exit. And if you have a Samsung TV, you probably see this A, B, C, D button. In reality of it, these buttons are used for Samsung applications where you can do certain pop-ups. But again, it's only for certain dedicated applications, so it's really a waste of space if you ask me. And then at the bottom you have settings, info so you can pull up different information on screens, also your closed caption, and the controls for a Blu-ray player or anything that has a disc in it. Also, I would tell you that this TV will program the remote control automatically it depends on what you plug into it, which is a cool feature. So far, this television looks really good, but the one thing you want to do first thing is go into the menu settings and go ahead and update it. Now, from the remote control, go and press settings, go down to support, then go to software update. Now, I'm going to show you guys just some general functions of the television set. When it comes to gaming, this TV set automatically selects 4K 60 frames per second as long as you're using the HDMI 2.2 cable. All you need to do is just power up your device and make sure it's in 4K mode and you're ready to go. So let's power up the PlayStation. As you can see it automatically detected the device. It also labeled it automatically. Turned on gaming mode automatically. And now you're ready to play. It also sets up the remote control to control it automatically, so let's grab the remote control and see what happens. As you see, I can now control the PlayStation without programming anything. Now let's wipe it down again so I can show you the applications that are built in. And by the way, it looked like it was a scratch on the screen, but it wasn't. It was a streak from my finger. So taking a closer look at the menu, you just press the home button on the remote. And here's your home screen. You can see the Samsung account that you're logged in, notifications, as well as privacy choices. And if you arrow over, you have your applications. And of course, there's plenty of applications in here. As you can see, there's downloaded applications. You also have videos, sports, games. Back to the home, you have search. And then you have sources. And yes, it does support NAS servers. 
And if you have a NAS server, you need to go into the security settings and set it up where the TV can share those different folders and files. You also have remote access and you can use your PC, share and screen, Office 365. And you can also go down here to cloud services. And I will tell you the cloud services are only for things that you bookmarked on the internet like Dropbox and things like that, but it doesn't really connect to a cloud service directly. It also comes with a connection guide and the remote control is universal. In case this TV set didn't find your device, you can go here and manually find your device like cable boxes and you can it'll walk you directly through each way to set it up. Same as home theaters, gaming consoles and Blu-ray players. You can press settings at the bottom of remote control or here on the TV set, it's a quick set guide so you can go through all these different settings like your speaker output, your sleep timer, connections, your color tones, picture clarity, digital output, and pretty much all settings right here at the bottom. And that's the main setup right there. Now I'm going to test this Crystal UHD. Now so far I've been playing TV signals and things like that and it hasn't up converted anything to looks like 4K so that could be a misleading statement. Now here I have a 1080p Blu-ray and a HDR disc using the Sony Blu-ray HDR player so let's see if we can see some difference. Now because of copyright reasons I will only play a couple seconds of the Blu-ray disc. And here's a shameless plug. If you do watch Blu-ray movies you might want to take a look at this Sony. I made a video about it and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But the great thing about it is it will play 4K videos. So let's get into it. And let's see if the TV automatically programs remote control and there it is. It detected it. It found it and it labeled it Blu-ray. And what do you know? The Samsung remote is programmed automatically which is a cool feature. I love it. So what we're going to do is watch this 4K footage for about 10 to 20 seconds and then I'm going to put in the other disc and see if you can tell the difference. You can see right there, there's the black levels at an angle and it's flawless. Not bad for an inexpensive TV set. Now we're going to switch over to the Blu-ray disc and see if it looks as good as this. Now looking at it right now, it looks really good. As far as 4K, it could probably pass for someone who can't see the difference. But the biggest thing I noticed is because I was playing the other disc in HDR, definitely a color difference. So I'll give them a pass on the Blu-ray player, but let's try some other sources. I made a quick video with this thumb drive, so let's see if it can take this 1080 output and convert it to 4K. So after watching that footage, it did look pretty good. It did up convert the signal quite a bit off the thumb drive. But there's a few things I need to say about this technology and I'll tell you at the end of the video. Another thing that I really like about this television set that it does support Bluetooth. So let me show you how to set it up real quick. From the settings menu, go down to sound, then go down to sound output, and then scroll down to Bluetooth list. Now it's searching for different Bluetooth devices once it finds your headphones or soundbar, just press on it and it will connect automatically. The last thing I want to show you guys, if you have a Samsung phone that has Bixby, you can connect the SmartThings application and then control the television set. But after doing a few tries off camera, it's so tedious, I don't know if you want to use it, but I'll show you an example of that. Turn off Samsung 7 Series 43. Okay, let's try it again. Turn off Samsung 7 Series 43. Looks like we don't have that device. Turn off Samsung 7 Series 43. All set. It's now off. Now it finally turned off the TV set after three tries. Let's try to turn it back on. 
Turn owns Samsung 7 Series 43. As you can see, even though it's connected to the SmartThings application, it cannot find my device unlike a Google Home system or something like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed looking at some of the features that this TV have to offer. And I made a video on the RU7100, which has even more features that you can do with this set, but I didn't want to make the video 30 minutes long. So go check that video out. I'm going to put that right here beside me. Now, when it comes to the Crystal UHD, in my opinion, it's a rebranding because after looking at the RU7100, they look so similar that I personally can't tell a difference. Now, maybe it is, maybe there's some technical reasons, but I personally couldn't tell a difference. So if you want to save a few bucks and lose a few inputs, then I would say go with this TU7100 because it'll save you about $30 to $100, depends on what size you get. So if you like this kind of content, be sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Tech Steve. I'll see you on this video, and you guys be safe out there. Peace.